Hello, everybody. Welcome back once again to the Pop Premier League, hosted or uh, sponsored by CoolStuffInc.com and Wizards of the Coast. I'm Kendra Smith here with brand new semifinalist Chris Van Meter. Chris, how, how you? Uh, I know Alex talked to you just a little bit, but how are you feeling? You just won uh, some pretty rough, ma- you know, matches that yeah, you were like a little nervous about. <laughs> I'm feeling very lucky. Uh, I I got lucky to beat Ricardo. Um, didn't go. You didn't even go to a third match, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, although I would have picked Mono Black, I think I would have been fine against either Boggles or his Affinity deck with the Mono Black deck if our draws lined up. Uh, but now, now we get to see uh, who wins between Michael Bondi, Pro Mythic Championship Top Eight competitor, and Brian Demars, <laughs> Grand Grand Prix champion, uh, to see which one of them is going to fight me in the semifinals, um, and. I'm a little nervous because they're both very good. Absolutely. <laughs> so what we've got going on here first, we're going to do again. Once again, we're back to the uh, best of three matches. So this isn't just like, you know, a best two out of th- one best two out of three match. It's three of those matches. They have to win two of them. Now, first up, we have Michael on burn going up against um, Brian's stompy list. And then immediately after that, we have, uh Brian on Tron and Michael on Stompy. So how do you how do you feel about this one, Chris? Uh so I, I I'm not surprised to see a lot of aggro decks. Uh when you're playing best two best two out of three matches. Uh in the third match you kind of get to pick one of your decks, so it gives you a little bit of flexibility. There's some times where you just have a deck that lines up very well against both of your both of your opponents' deck, Stonehorn Tron and Burn are two decks that would fall into that category. So I think that both of these players did a good job picking those decks. Uh, I think it would have been cool to see a Stomping Mirror, considering they're both playing almost the, the exact same uh, main deck. But the decks are a little flip-flopped. I think that mm-hmm. uh, so Burn versus Stompy is a little bit of a toss-up with a slight edge to Burn, uh, since a lot of their cards can line up very well. Something like Searing Blaze mm-hmm. uh, is bad when it's bad and game-breaking when it's good and against uh, Stompy, it's very, very good. And then once we get into uh, Stompy versus Tron, I think that it's going to be in favor of the Tron decks. Stonehorn Dignitary is very difficult for decks with no hard removal uh, to actually get rid of. And then once we get down to the third match, uh, I think that Michael is going to end up picking Burn. Um, I'm not sure what Brian will pick. I think it's going to depend on how well this Burn versus Stompy first match plays. Absolutely. So looks like we're about ready to go. So let's get going. Let's get down to the floor and let's let's see some action. We've got some uh, hands already here. We got Michael on burn here. We've got Brian on Stompy, and I don't know how I feel about that Stompy hand. That I feel like uh, we may see a mulligan there from Brian's side, uh, but Michael Michael's hand looks great. Yeah, I, th- I think I think Brian's I think Brian's gonna mulligan, and I think that Michael's just going to keep. Although I wouldn't be surprised to see him send it back. Right, but I think it has enough action. I mean, especially after we saw what happened last time. Now, granted, there's only one lava runner here compared to the two of last time, but um, or yeah, but um, I think you know. With, we've got the thermal alchemist there. If if we see a second land, then we're just straight cooking with gas here. We go lava runner, then we go into thermal alchemist, and we're off to the races. But we're just going to see Michael le- takes the lead, and he's going to just go in with that straight lava runner. And, now, but, one thing one thing I do want to point out is these types of hands are the reason why I just play a flat seventeen mountain in my burn list mm-hmm. as opposed to the standard fifteen mountain two forgotten cave like what Michael is playing. If he draws a forgotten cave here on turn two, you know it's still not going to be the worst. But if it, if it's just a mountain, he's going to be miles ahead of the other option. Absolutely, and this hand looks really actually pretty good for uh, Brian here. Now we are going to see this like vault scourge that just dropped onto the board. It's going to go away pretty quickly here. We have the resources here from uh, Michael, but we we are going to see immediately after that is we're going to see burning tree emissary into burning tree emissary into scarg and pit skull. We might not even see the scarg and pit skull to be honest with you. Yeah, I really like this attack first because then it's going to allow Michael to utilize the skewer of the critics to get rid of the vault scourge, mm-hmm. keeping his hand very, very lean in terms of mana cost. 
Absolutely. And not so drawing a land though is very, very tough. So what so I like the play of going burning tree emissary into burning tree emissary into savage swipe myself here. What do you think of that one, Chris? Yeah, I think it's way better than uh playing the pit skulk. The only thing to consider is Savage Swipe is one of the few ways that the Stompy deck has to, has to interact with Thermal Alchemist. But Michael's already missed a couple land drops, and at this point I think that he needs to just get that uh, Lava Runner off the board uh, and start pressuring his opponent. Absolutely. We do miss out on some of the uh, actual pumps from the Savage Swipe here, which is unfortunate. But uh, again, we're trying to play the pressure game here. And what we'll just see is next turn, those burning tram series are going to come right from Michael's life total, and then we're going to immediately follow it up with the Scarg and Pit Skull that's actually going to get the counter high. And there it is. Savage Swipe takes out that Lava Runner. This is going to be a crucial turn for Michael. I think he needs to, he really needs to draw a mountain here to try mm -hmm. and push this game. There it and is. He does. So, so now he's going to be able to land a a Thermal Alchemist, and then depending on the rest of the texture of his hand, he can decide if he wants to go all face or just utilize the chip damage from Thermal Alchemist to try and further his game plan mm -hmm. while picking off the creatures on uh, Brian DeMars' side. It looks like he's just trying to get these creatures out of here. That's interesting. I'm, I'm I'm a little surprised that he doesn't play the Thermal Alchemist. I guess maybe he's just playing around another Savage Swipe. Yeah, or just, that's what it feels or, like. Or just using his removal while Brian is tapped out and not able to save his creatures. Mm -hmm. And because and it looks like Brian does not have mutagenic growth in his list. Yep. And it's another mountain. So we got the Thermal Alchemist coming down here. I think... Michael's debating what he wants to do here. Looks like he's going to suspend this Rift Bolt. So Moldermine Cloak is going to be able to land on this Pit Skulk, but I don't know if four damage a turn is going to be enough to, to, to race this. Uh, Brian just has to hope that Michael floods here, because if Michael starts mm -hmm. to draw into any additional burn, his life total is going to drop very quickly. Yeah, and what we'll also see happen too is... Um, you know, if Michael just draws Gitu Lava Runners like crazy, they're not really going to do very much here. Because that Kieran Ranger can just uh, untap a, a Scarred and Pit Skull if, the, if any Lava Runners trying to go through. So it's, it's just not going to happen. And right. four comes in hot here at Michael. T turn one of five for how many attacks he needs to make with the 4-4. Four, four. <laughs> yep. Five turn clock, let's go. All right, well, this is going to be four. He has another four in his hand, plus the one. So that's nine. He really just needs to draw one or two more spells. Something like Needle Drop would be a very yeah, good draw. Needle form. Drop. I really would hope to see, I think, and it may be a little ambitious, but Needle Drop into Needle Drop into Fire Blast. I think Needle Drop into Needle Drop into Fire Blast is probably lethal from here. I haven't done the math, but it seems like it's probably close. It's 100% lethal. No, we Curse. didn't find that, but we did find a Curse of the Pierce Heart, which is not a bad draw here. Yeah, it's not bad. So Brian's turn is going to go to 12 and then 11. And so we have five... Eleven, four, That's seven. Really Ranger. That's not really going to do it so much here. Yeah, this is going to give Michael at least one more draw. So is Fire Blast legal here? Lethal? No, it's not lethal. It's off by one. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, it will end up being lethal with the curse for next turn. Yeah. Because he, he, he can deal 10. Yeah, might as well use your Thermal Alchemist now. Yeah. 
I really like doing this now so that he can cast Rift Bolt Absolutely. next turn if he draws it. Come on, Fire Blast, one time. Fire Blast or Needle Drop. Oop, Needle Drop. Ooh, needle that, drop. Turns, that turns on all of the other burn spells. Come on, one time. Let's see it. Something good. Not a Searing Blaze. No. Oh, no. So close. All right, well, we might as well suspend it. I think... Okay, uh, Brian DeMars, you have a turn. I think <laughs> Bundy still has this, though. I don't think yeah, there's really anything that can come out of um, DeMars' deck that can deal with that. Yeah, there's, like, even if he has a way to kill the Thermal Alchemist, he's still just straight dead to the... Yep. Yep, that's it. That's going to be all she wrote here. Man, Thermal Alchemist is a hell of a card. Sure is. And this curse really isn't that bad either. A lot of people, you know, give it some flack that, you know, oh, it's here, you know, it doesn't really do, do too much. But then if you get games that start to go long, it starts chipping in and it can actually do like four or five points of damage for just two mana, which is a huge deal. And so Michael's going to block here just because there's no reason not to. There isn't a card that can kill him. And even if the Alchemist happens to die, he still has lethal with the uh, Rift Bolt that's on the stack. Yep, absolutely. And it looks like oh, Michael no. is going to take this first game yep. between Burn and Stompy. Uh, and I'm curious to see how they end up sideboarding. Brian with the troll on tap. <laughs> Might as well. And there it is. Michael Bundy. First game, but now we get some more spice coming in hot. Those essence wounds are coming right on in. Yeah, from, so like, on, uh, from Brian. So on Demar's side, I definitely think that we're going to see essence warden come in. Um, Probably some number of the epic confrontation. Potentially epic confrontation, just as a as a way to interact with thermal alchemist. Um, and I think that that's really the only. The only things that I would want to see in here. So it looks like he's actually taking out the vault scourge. Uh, Brian's taking out the vault scourges just for the essence wardens and calling it there. Huh. It's interesting that he's cutting. Uh, it, 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 you know, it does suck that you have to pay two. If you ever get to untap with it and play any of your pump spells on it, it really does turn the tide of the game. Absolutely. But it is definitely very fragile, and that is very concerning. I've played Stompy before, and I honestly take out the Vault Scourges myself against the Burn match just because it's so risky. Now, from Michael's side, it looks like we're going to see some Martyr of Ashes, maybe some Kelden Marauders in place of those uh, Curses. Um, I don't really like Electricry. Strangely uh -huh. enough, the Stompy deck doesn't have a lot of X1s that you're actually mm -hmm. going to feel good getting with Electricry. Yeah, and I feel like this is going to be a mulligan from both sides. We saw uh, Damars definitely took a mulligan there. If I had to be a Benton woman, I think we're going to see a force go to the bottom. Yep. Michael kept his hand. This feels, like a, this feels a little risky. If he sees a second land, he's in business, but it, it seems a little dangerous. What do you uh, think? I think that you end up having to keep a lot of one land hands with burn, and it's just kind of something you accept. If, if he mulligans, there's you know a fairly decent chance that it's just another one land hand, and then you're uh -huh. down a card, which you can't often afford to be down a card with the burn deck. Yeah. And that chain lightning's gonna take out that essence word nice and fast, but without the uh 
downside of having lost two life in the process of casting it. Yeah, but that's not a bad spot to use the uh, mm -hmm. the burn spell on. Uh, Essence Warden has the potential to gain some life back, and you know, you're, when your opponent has mulliganed like Brian has, you definitely just want to try and whittle away at their resources, since the, the Stompy deck doesn't really have a card that can get them back when they're down resources. There isn't a Lead the Stampede, there isn't a Muldrifter, there isn't a, you know, an Astrolabe type card that's going to allow them to chain things together. Right, right. And as well, Mongrel is actually really good here. Be curious to see if Brian plays the Forester, keeps it in his hand to try and I, pump his Mongrel. Yeah, it looks like he's keeping it, which is probably what I would do here if I were in his shoes. But he does find the mountain, so are we going to see Thermal Alchemist come down? Or are we maybe going to see Kelden Marauders first? I think we're going to see Kelden Marauders. I think the Kelden Marauders is going to be able to do some damage. Um, and the idea would be to just kind of put it in front of the Wild Mongrel and make mm -hmm. Brian use some of his resources for it. But what we're going to see here is these Savage Swipes are going to allow him to uh, remove the blocker and pressure Michael's life total at the same time, which is going to be very important. Right. So let's see what my, uh, let's see what tomorrow's draw is. Oh, ooh, it's a Kieran Ranger. That's actually a pretty good draw here. Especially uh, alongside that uh, wild mongrel there, because you can just start picking up your forest and just ditching them into the graveyard. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised here to see Quirin Ranger come down just as the just to give him the ability to pick up forests for his wild mongrel. Absolutely. Now, I think that we're likely to see Michael just play this Kelden Marauders. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're just going to see the exact same thing happen next turn, where Savage Swipe is going to take care of it, allow Brian to get in some damage. Um, and then Michael's going to need to get into a spot where he can stop the bleeding, get down that Thermo Alchemist, and then chain together some burn spells before Brian draws into a big creature enchantment that puts his creatures out of the range of the burn spells. Something like... Uh, Moldervine Cloak or Elephant yeah. Guide. And he also definitely wants a Rancor at some point or another here. Oh, and he's just going to keep the forest in his hand. I like that. Yeah, it seems pretty good because then he can just ditch the two forests when he knows that he's got that nice little uh, Savage Swipe there just waiting in the works. We're definitely going to see that Savage Swipe. It's going to come in hard. It's going to come in fast. To another land for Brian. It's not, not great. Uh, it's not he is going to be able to get in for five this turn. I'm just going to put Michael down to 11. And then he's going to try it. He wants to get to a spot here where he can just kill with the Mongrel by pitching his hand. Mm-hmm. And we're we're definitely at the point as well, I think, where I think the best draw that Brian really wants to see right now, uh, among other things, at least is a Rancor. I wonder if he's going to play well, no, he doesn't he actually doesn't have to play a forest here because he has mm -hmm. that Eldrazi spawn. So if he draws a three mana spell next turn, he can cast it. Yeah. So we're going to see a Roof Bolt get suspended after the Thermal Alchemist comes right on into play. So if if Michael actually draws a, oh, a, a, oh, a, a one-mana draw. burn spell... Oh, wow. Look yeah, at that amazing draw from Brian. The third Savage Swipe to take out the uh, Thermal Alchemist there. That's amazing. I love it. Yeah, that's, that was the it. best draw he could have. I think here what we might actually see is this Rift Bolt get pointed at the Wild Mongrel. So, looks like he's just missing lethal. Yeah, it'd be off by two. Yeah. 
So I think we're going to see the Rift Bolt here pointed at the Wild Mongrel. Yeah, you pretty much have to. But what's going to, so what's going to end up happening is that Michael's probably just going to have to waste two burn spells on that Wild Mongrel, or else it's probably just going to take away with the game at this point. Yeah. Another Thermal Alchemist would be probably the best draw here for mm -hmm. Michael. It's interesting that Brian played that other forest. But I guess he didn't really need it. It could also be that he just wants to be able to uh, play a land and put an enchantment on the Eldrazi Scion if needed. Mm -hmm. He's going to pitch the two lands here to make Michael have to use two burn spells. Yeah. Which is that nice, sweet, hot tech play. Gotta love it. For those of you who are a million years old, you may remember how relevant Wild Mongrel change in color was, as cards like Terror and Expunge were played quite a bit back in the Wild Mongrel days. I mean, and it's still even somewhat relevant today. Now you have um, uh, Doomblade gets played in a decent number of decks. Mm -hmm. uh, Prismatic Strands, it's a good way to get around Prismatic Strands as well. Which, oh, for the record, there's the well, Mulder, Mike. Look. Yeah. Well, Michael may end up having to use this Rift Bolt plus Skewer on the Cloaked Ranger. Yep. And it looks like he's going to use the Curing Ranger abilities so that way he doesn't have to sacrifice the spawn just yet. Yep. And Crane Ranger is quite a card. They don't make them like they used to. I'm seeing somebody say that Doom Blade does not get played. It's been definitely seeing a little bit less play lately, but we do see it in Tron decks. We see it in uh, like Teachings decks. We definitely see it. It doesn't show up quite as much as some other uh, spells, but we do see it uh, reasonably often in the Popper Beta game. I Ooh, pardon me. I do like Brian putting that Motorvine Cloak on the Eldrazi spawn. That way it kind of splits his damage up a bit. And even if Michael uses two burn spells to take care of it, he's still going to be on a two-turn clock with that Quarian Ranger. Yep. Man, had Michael brought an Electric Re, Electric would have been a great spot there. Sure would. Same with uh, Martyr of Ashes would have been very really good. At this too. point, it looks like uh, Brian just wins here. Well, the uh, the skewer is going to take care of the Eldrazi, but Brian can just dredge that Moldervine cloak and then recast it. Yep. Which is going to completely shut out Michael. Michael's going to probably bluff this mountain here, try and make it seem like you know he's holding up another burn spell or something like that. But at that point, at the same time, why wouldn't you just play the burn spell on the Curing Ranger while your opponent's hell bent? So I think I think that Brian's gonna you know probably read that and just gonna show no fear and just slam it. Also, to be fair, I think that if Michael does have a burn spell here, I wouldn't use it while my opponent's tapped out. Like I would wait um, for them to draw with their uh, to dredge the Moldervine cloak because then you could just strand a dead card in their hand for the turn. Like if he just kills it on his turn, then Brian is not going to dredge the Moldervine cloak. All right, yeah, so it looks like Brian DeMars is going to Moldervine Cloak up the Quirin Ranger. Going to take the take game two from Michael, and we're going to see a game three here, Stompy versus Burn. Yeah, I'm did really not excited think that, that Did not think that was going to happen. However, uh, running, running, running Savage Swipes can do that sometime. Yeah, absolutely. And what we're going to see, though, is we're going to see uh, Michael's on the play. I think that's going to really impact this uh, game tremendously.
Huh? <laughs> I was getting Facebook messages. <laughs> like, hey, leave me alone. I'm playing proper Premier League. Got some tournaments to win. Or after he wins this, he's going to win uh, some matches in uh, Vegas there. Yeah, Grand Prix. There we go. So Michael's going to be on the play, which is pretty huge. Uh, that means that he could potentially land a Thermo Alchemist and get things going here, uh, depending on if Brian has a Savage Swipe or the like. Was that a mulligan from Michael? Looks like maybe he had zero lands in his opener. I, I think I missed it. Ooh, and Demar's, Demar's mulligan to a no-lander, so he's going to be going to five. Oof, we got a six lander that actually has some gas versus the, or I'm sorry, a six hand with some gas, it's a good but five. not perfect versus the five that has just gas on top of gas on top of gas. I think you ship. I think you ship the two Grand Ranger for Demar's hand. Yep. Just burning tree into wild mongrel is fantastic. It's a good clock. Yeah, I really like the no suspend here and just cycling that forgotten cave at the end of Brian's turn. Ooh, and we got an estimator too. That seems really great here. Cycling of that forgotten cave. I think Michael. Ooh, got the electric. Ray. That's not really going to do ray. too much here. Sadly, uh, Marauders oh. is going to get the damage there. Yeah, it's going to try and start the beat down. So then, if you're Brian. Do you go in for a burning tree into... Wow, there's another Savage Swipe, too. Oof. So... Man. I, hmm. I, th I think that you have to... So, you, here, here's, here's the, the thought pattern. If you burning tree into another creature, I guess it just has to be Wild Mongrel. Then you can save it from a burn spell. Yeah. And that lets you Savage Swipe the following turn. The other solution that I was thinking of is Nest Invader, because you can just go, yeah, because then you can uh, use the token to block the Marauders. Hmm. I wonder if we're going to see Electric Re take care of that token. I probably would have done that. Yeah. Just I feel well, like Trick Race here just seems like it's, do something with yes, it. it's not going to do anything here on this board. It could also be he's just going to let let him block, let them block, and then use something like Chain Lightning to kill one of the creatures, and then hold up Lightning Bolt for Savage Swipe. Mm hmm The other option from Demar's side could be just to take the damage, and then you can use the side, the the Eldrazi along with the Forest to play Wild Mongrel. Yep. Uh, and Savage Swipe on your turn to further your board, but I don't know if that's worth taking three points of damage. Probably not. Right, especially against a deck like Burn, and that Vines is definitely very good here. Yeah, this Vines may blank the Lightning Bolt and let Savage Swipe resolve. To kill, kill the Marauders, and get in six points of damage. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm seeing a comment here that you don't need to Savage Swipe the Marauder. And you're right, you don't need to Savage Swipe it, but you kind of want to, to deal some uh, extra points of damage. Looks like uh, Brian disagrees, though, and decides to hold on to that Savage Swipe there for a little bit. That is also oh. true. That is also true. You don't need to Savage Swipe the Marauder. Uh, then again, there aren't a lot of targets for it in the burn deck. And... 
I, I don't think that you can cast Savage Swipe unless you have a target for the fight. Yep, absolutely. So uh, if Michael doesn't draw creatures, then those Savage Swipes just sit there kind of dead. I wonder what. Although, even if they even if they sit there uh, kind of dead, you know what they do? They fuel the wild mongrel. I wonder what Michael's plan is here. I don't think that he can afford to go face just yet, but he's not really going to get far trying to pick off these creatures. I guess he could just kill all three of the creatures here. Mm hmm. And then it'll be three cards versus three cards. Man, I would be way more way more keen on going face here had we used the electricery to kill that Eldrazi spawn. Because then our opponent would be at 15. Yeah. And we'd be one, you know, one three one burn spell off of the I guess he's just gonna go face here. I'm gonna risk it for the biscuit. Oh, there's another Marauders. It's not gonna work quite as well as I think Michael's hoping it will. Because yeah, now there we will actually see the savage swipe this time. Yeah, this swipe is going to be quite savage. <laughs> Man, yeah. Getting in that damage. Because Michael didn't even use that mana, right? Yeah, that's a he, he says he suspended Rick Bolt and then left the mana. Playing Hunger the Hell Pack here, too, is huge. Yeah, so Swipe's going to kill the Marauders. Hunger is going to punch the creature up. Yeah. Five, nine. It's going to be 11 points of damage. With the vines in, waiting in the wings. Yeah. And I, I, I feel like Brian has stolen this match. Absolutely. So you just pump up the mongrel. Yeah. And then keep it completely out of range. Nine. That mongrel not getting touched. Nine, ten, eleven. That's gonna put Michael at five. Yep. Man. Yeah, had we had had Michael used the electricery to get it to get through three points of damage that turn, and then just went rift bolt face bolt bolt face, he would have drawn the lightning bolt here and mm -hmm. killed. And there it is, kills so, his opponent. So that's going to be our first uh, match here. Goes to Brian Demars. So now we're going to see uh, we're going to actually see uh, a switch out here. Chris is going to uh, switch out for Alex again. And we're going to see uh, Michael this time on Stompy himself. And we're going to see Brian this time on Stonehorn Tron. And hold on to your butts, kids. This is going to be a long one. <laughs> Probably. And I think that Stonehorn Tron is favored. But then again, I thought that Burn was favored here. And we saw Michael kind of capitalize on a mm -hmm. small misstep. Or Brian capitalize on a small misstep from Michael and steal the match. Absolutely. So I'm really excited to see how this all goes. So hang on tight, everybody. Thank you, Chris. I can't wait to see you play next week. Can't wait to see what you bring. And uh, we'll see you then. So we'll be back here very shortly, everybody. Don't go anywhere. CoolStuffInc.com is your home for everything Magic the Gathering. Need singles for constructed or kitchen table play? Looking to pick up some sealed product or the latest in Magic accessories? We've got you covered with our extensive live inventory. With free shipping on orders of $100 or more, 25% buy list bonus, and our ever-popular customer rewards program, CoolStuffInc.com is the place for all your Magic the Gathering needs.
Hello, everybody. My name is Kendra Smith, and this is Alex Ullman. Welcome back to the Popper Premier League, sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc. and Wizards of the Coast. And uh, we are back for match number two of Brian DeMars versus uh, Michael Bondi. How do you feel, Alex? Uh, I mean, listen, I, I, I like Michael and I like Brian, but... I, I really think Brian has a significant advantage going into this game. Uh, mm -hmm. Michael's going to be on Stompy, the aggro deck that is, as someone pointed out in the chat, uh, has an absurd record in the Papa Premier League, partially because um, every, uh, it's been the most run deck. I think four different people have run it. Uh, well, rather, three different people have run it four times. Uh, but then we also have Brian on Stonehorn Tron. Or Flickertron and Stonehorn Tron, Fog Tron is How probably the deck. I, 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 he, I don't think he's running any moments pieces main. No, um, he's not. He's running a couple it, on the sideboard though. But and it we'll is, definitely see those come in. It is the one of the decks I like playing against the least because I know I have a hard. I, I like to play aggressive decks most of the time. Uh, I just like attacking a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but what I don't like is when I am facing down a Stonehorn Dignitary on turn four with what I know is going to be an Ephemerate next turn. And what basically it means is that you have to win by turn four. Right. If you're lucky. Because you can be incredibly unlucky and start facing down Stonehorns, which take away attack phases, on turn three, thanks to Tron. But right. we're going to see if Michael can break serve um and kind of get it has a shot he can go fast enough you know gotta go fast and all that so let's see what we got going on it sounds like they're about ready to go let's get down to the table and let's let's take it away i mean to be fair michael has to win this match to force a third game a third match rather and that's kind of a hand that can do it he has all the mana he wants burning tree emissary vault scourge uh you know and he's on the plate which is a, uh, a really good place to be Yep, um, looks like we got a rogue uh, game log chat there. That we it's just, gone. Yep, there it is. Yeah, it's out of here. Brian is going to get Tron. That's not going to be the problem. But his hand is light on interaction. Um, it's also pretty slow, whereas yeah. Michael was kind of running out of the gate here. That's, That's a, a huge river draw. boa. That's a big one. Yeah. Uh, Riverboat has been seeing a lot more play recently just because it is unblockable so often thanks to Island Walk. Mm -hmm. But um, so Michael uh, Michael goes for the Burning Tree Emissary, you know, a card that kind of really started the stompy reinvigoration a couple of years ago in 2017. And River Boa, oh no, he's going for. And I, I like this. Yeah. Oh, well, why? Because there's there's there is a case for both of it actually yes but the thing is we don't know or we know that there's an island in Brian's hand Michael does not well it's just a more mana efficient play you use up all your mana um, mm -hmm. what's really interesting with that play from Brian is he could have gotten Tron on turn three he's still gonna get it but instead he is um. I, I'm not sure this was more mana efficient going Signet into Tron. Oh, I, I guess it is because you can... No, I... Well, he draws it naturally anyway, so he's just going to have all the mana he could ever want. Yeah. Um, but He doesn't I, I have don't... any like fog effects, doesn't have any life gain, so this is going to be interesting to see how this all plays out here. Do you think there's merit to playing the Tron land, playing the Prism... Evoking Mole Drifter, Flickering, Prism, and Mole Drifter. Yeah, I was actually thinking that exact line. And I think there's definitely some very strong merit there because you need to push this damage through as quickly as possible. But at the same time, unbeknownst to Brian, that opens up uh, Michael to go Savage Swipe the Mole Drifter and then cast Hunger of the Hollow Pack. I, I think Brian would be aware of... I mean, he's played Stompy a lot, and I think oh, he'd absolutely. be aware of that line. Um, but let's see, what is... We're what definitely is, seeing Moldrifter come down, I think, no matter what. And yeah, it looks like we're just going to see a hard cast Moldrifter. 
Oh, he's, he, I like what he's doing. He's uh, leaving up the white potentially for ephemerate this turn. Mm hmm. But yeah, but I'm not sure. This sets up. Ooh, there's the Stonehorn Dignitary with Ghostly Flecker. So <laughs> what it comes down to is Michael kind of has this turn to get through as much damage as he can, but he's going to be able to get to through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, nine, twelve. And if he draws kind of anything, if he draws another hunger, he is in business. He is, but he kind of has to win here. Um, this is kind of his last window of opportunity before mm -hmm. uh, things get a little uh, scary. Hunger, Rancor. Rancor does it. Hunger does it. Vines doesn't, nope. unfortunately. Um, <gasps> there it is. Oh, my God. He stole this game. I mean, this is exactly how you, this is how you draw it up, right? You yeah, you just get your double hunger of the Howl Pack because Stumpy always has it anyway. And, you know, you're just attacking for a casual. What is it? Uh, 15, 16 on turn three. I believe it's 15, yes. Let's see, that's four. <laughs> and I'm sure Brian, like the Brian, like, it's not a good day for people named Brian playing Tron because they have yeah. just faced off against just such absurd draws. So let's see, that's five, nine, plus four. Uh, five, that's exactly 14. Oh, 15 okay. damage. So we're going to game two and. Things yeah. are not going to get easier for for Brian, uh, for Michael rather. Brian, Michael's bringing in four copies of Gleeful Sabotage. Meanwhile, it looks like Brian is bringing in his moments piece, um, cutting the one main deck pyroblast. <laughs> I um, don't know how I feel about bringing in all four Gleeful Sabotages. I was going to ask because I. While it does definitely hit all a, a, a number of Brian's uh, like colored mana sources, it also it doesn't take all of them out. There's still obviously the, like the snow covered lands in Brian's list, and um, and you're also only ever really probably going to hit one, maybe two. It's not the greatest. It's good for sure, but I think I would be more inclined to run maybe two of them if I was bringing them in, maybe three. But I think so, four is a little overkill. I don't think you bring it in. I, I don't think it's good in this matchup. I, I think it's actually kind of... Um, it's counter to your game plan. Your goal yeah. is you want to put... You want to just deal damage. Damage, 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 damage. Did you and see this? Uh, looks like uh, Michael actually took out a forest. Yeah, well. I, I, I think that's fine. He's mm -hmm. running how many lands? Um, is he running 16 or 17? I'm looking at the deck list now. 16. Looks like he's running. Oh, so he's, you know, I think cutting a forest when you're at 17 on the draw is defensible. Mm -hmm. Going down to 15 on the draw, that's like there are that that's risky. Yeah, this is not a hand that's going to do it though. Well, neither hand looks all that great, but I think um, if you're Brian, you're more likely to keep, and Michael just has to mulligan that into yeah. a very good hand. That, yeah, that hand is amazing for uh, Michael. Brian's oh. isn't perfect, but it sets up some really good draws. But if you're Michael, what do you put on the bottom? It looks like he's looking at Forest. I think you actually put Gleeful Sabotage on the bottom, which... I oh, he put Forest on the bottom. Oh. That's interesting. You know what? You might have put Hunger of the Howl Pack on the bottom. That's what I was actually thinking of putting on the bottom myself. But, yeah, I, I think you really need that second forest just because you want to double spell next turn. Right, because what you're going to see basically happen is you're trying to get in for some damage, yes, but you're not really going to see a lot of creatures dying on Tron's side, and you basically then have to have net... And even on your side, your opponent is not going to block you very much. So... Unless you have Nets Invader, the hunger is a little less effective than we probably want it to be. So I think I probably would have put that on the bottom and kept that extra forest there. But Michael is still doing pretty solid here. Although 
Brian found some gas. Brian found moments piece. Brian found uh, compulsive research so he can just draw more cards or he can even just evoke Mole Drifter. Yeah, I, I think, so it looks like Michael's plan has been all about this uh, Nell Sentinel. He's going mm-hmm. in for four. Um, and so now his play is, uh, he has a chance to untap it next turn no matter what, whether that's with hunger to make it a 5-2 yeah. or naturally draw a land. Um, Brian has an interesting decision here. He's going to play a land, but do you leave up the mana to compulsive? Um, I don't think so. I think, uh, sorry, leave up the mana moments piece, and I don't think so. You're not facing a ton of pressure. I think, um, yeah, tapping out for compulsive research makes sense here because if you get your third Tron piece, you untap into Ulamox Crusher, and the game is basically over. Um, I don't think there's any merit to untap uh, to evoking Mold Drifter here mm-hmm. because look, I'm pretty sure Brian sided out his moments, uh, his Pulse of Marasa. Oh, and there it is. What just happened? Tron. Found a Tron piece. Okay, that's actually pretty important because now, yep, Michael can River Boa put. Brian down to 12. Yeah. So now the question becomes, do we see Crusher here, or do we see Mold Drifter evoked into a Ghosty Flicker? No, I, I think... I don't think you put Ulamox Crusher in your deck to not play it on turn four. Right. But as someone who's played a lot of Turbo Ulamox Crusher decks, it's not as good as you think it is against Stompy. Right, especially um, because we'll just see that Nest Invader come down, and then he just sacrificed the token. And then if Michael has a third land, then he can just hunger the Hollow Pack. It's, it's not even the token. It's Ranker. Yeah. You know, Annihilator 1 is a lot worse than Annihilator 2. Um, and so, no, Brian doesn't know about Hunger of the Hollow Pack. Um, and I'm not sure what you do here. If you are Michael, I, I mean, a lot's going to depend on exactly how Brian plays this, but I think Brian is going to feel priced into casting this Crusher. I don't think he's going to feel a ton of pressure um, since he knows he can block the four power creature no matter what. But I think he's actually priced into not doing anything. I think the right play here is hold up moments piece. which is actually going to potentially benefit uh, Michael, because Michael can then cast Gleeful on both those artifacts. Right. If we see a force, though, then what I think we will probably end up seeing is Nest Invader, Sacrifice the Token, Play Hunger, targeting uh, River Boa, and play the Vault Scourge. Well, the way Brian's playing this, he's going to be able to leave a moment's piece with the Mole Drifter anyway, so uh-huh. I, I completely miss the fact that he uh, has an additional land drop, which is at least going to be three mana, thanks to Urza's Tower. Yep. A, su- a sufficiently stupid magic card. Ooh, that, that was pretty good. But... Brian is still missing, you know, any kind of uh, flicker, great flicker target to end the game. Drawing a ton of cards with Mold Drifter is great. Right. Please, brother, man. I missed a land drop. Brian just skipped the land drop. No, no, that was turn four. That was turn four? Oh, you're right, you're right. But he still has access to the moments piece. Mm Mm-hmm. So I don't think you can... Can you cast the Gleeful and conspire it before... No. No, it doesn't work that way. It's been a yeah. while since I've played Gleeful Sabotage. Conspire is part of the cost. Yeah. It doesn't look like Michael noticed that. But still, I think... Attacking for... Six is pretty good here. Um, but we're definitely going to probably, it feels like we're going to see that moments piece coming in. 
Yeah, there's not much else for Brian to do with his mana. It's short of, obviously, like a ghostly flicker kind of thing. But there's not much value he's going to gain out of that apart from drawing three cards. He's highlighting the moments piece. We're getting, yeah. we're getting a, a, a fog. Fog frog. Spore frog. Or call me of ancient law. Whatever you prefer. <laughs> so this is really one of those reasons why moments piece is so good in popper. It's buying Brian two whole turns. Um, you know, Popper doesn't have a Wrath of God or a Damnation or a Day of Judgment effect. So the best you can do is buy a couple turns against aggressive decks. Um, often when you're trying, that's all you need. Yeah, absolutely. And what does Brian draw? Looks like an Urza's Mine. So I think you just, I, I think you, you slam Crusher. Yeah, at this point. Absolutely. Yep, and Brian, Brian didn't put it in his sideboard not to cast Ulamog's You know, Chris was talking about how he likes the Skyfisher Tron because it has a way to end games. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what ends games? Ulamog's Crusher. Eight eights with Annihilator 2. Huh. Of oh. course, the, uh, the other thing that we would see um, is... Uh, Man, I, I'm blanking on it now. I just had it. Um, compulsive research. So basically the way that you loop it is you have a uh, Stonehorn Dignitary, and you start flickering it. You make your opponents stop uh, passing through their... Uh, or make them pass through their combat steps. Mm -hmm. And then you just uh, ultimately get it to the point where you make them skip enough uh, combat steps that you then, instead of flickering... Uh, the ghostly flicker for the stone horn, you flicker two mnemonic walls. So that way you just get back compulsive research over and over and make your opponent draw their entire deck. So that way they actually mill out. You don't see a ton of that on magic online just because it is so click intensive, but it is absolutely something you can do. Um, and I've seen people end games in paper tournaments that way. Yep. I actually had someone try and do that to me at our local event. We actually have a very good, uh, very strong uh, popper community at Cool Stuff Inc. Uh, or Cool Stuff Games Maitland. Mm -hmm. we, and uh, we just had like a decent size. I think we had 20 people, 18, 20 people show up for our Saturday event this past weekend. And uh, I definitely had someone do that. They started looping compulsive research. And then they tapped out, and I got them with Harsh Sustenance because they made me draw the Harsh Sustenance. So I, I really like this play from both sides. Um, Michael attacks with two River Boas, trying to bait out the... Uh, clearly trying to bait out the Moments piece. Mm -hmm. But he sets it up so that he can double spell uh, Nest Invader into Conspired Gleeful Sabotage in an attempt to choke Brian off of... Discrete mana. What uh, Michael doesn't know is that one, there's a ghostly flicker in hand, and two, there's a prophetic prism. So this this play was very sweet, but it's not going to end up being the uh, yeah. backbreaker. That it was, it was doomed to failure from the start. Yeah, no matter what, uh, Brian's going to be able to cast fog on the optimal turn. Mm -hmm. And I don't think, I mean, the fact of the matter is, though, that Brian really needs to draw uh, gas. There's and the, there it is. There's Stonehorn. I mean, that's, that's kind of, oh, wow, did... No, okay, yeah, he, he did it correctly, okay. So let's see. So now Brian gets to crunch in, likely. Oh, whether this this game is over. Yeah, not this, a chance this in game it. is over. Like I, I, there's nothing Michael can really do with against the cards that Brian has in hand. Brian can go up to an obscene amount of life, take away a combat step, fog the next attack. Um. Yeah, it's only a matter of time at this point. 
Yeah. I, I think I, I don't know what number of cards out of Brian's hand it's going to take for Michael to concede. Um but let's see. Michael Brian can go up quite a bit of life this turn. Um and take away a combat step. Let's see. So at the end of this, Brian will have access to 13 mana. He can cast Arc Astrolabe, that's one. Prophetic Prism, that's two. Stonehorn, that's three. He can one gain 12 one. life this turn and yeah. take away a combat step. Um, and that Oh, and he can also cast Map, so that's 15 life. Oh, and yeah. a Signet. Why not? Yeah. Uh, so he's going to just go up to a casual... 26, take away a combat step. Uh, you know, as you do. Just just popper things. Just, yeah. Just <laughs> one things. And, yeah, there's no no attack phase for you. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, he saw enough. Yeah, My, so, Michael saw the writing on the wall there. So, this is kind of it um we see Michael a, looks like he's cutting out a savage swipe there. Yeah, I don't think you want that in. Period. Yeah. And then he brought in uh, another four, so he kept all four gleeful sabotages in the deck. One second. So it looks like we're getting, um, looks like we're going to remake this game. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, um, that's what it's sounding like, but we just got to wait. I just haven't actually seen anything or heard anything specifically from uh, Michael and, oh, no, that that is it. Uh, okay, sorry about Brian that, folks. Requested. So we're just going to really fast, really quickly, uh, set up another game here. Just this is what we do just to help reset the clocks and make sure because we want to have untimed matches. Unfortunately, um, Magic Online kind of took away a little bit of that functionality and made it a little difficult for us to do that. It's um, fine. Like the way we used to. So, but yes, so we still have a way to do it. And you know what this way is? We just move on to, uh, we just start a new match and instantly have some, you know, concede game, concede game. And then we're in game three. So what are you? What do you think um, about Brian's chances on the draw? I think it definitely gets a little harder, but there's a few cards that you could definitely play. Um, there's a few things I noticed that were still in his sideboard. Did you see that there was still a Pulsamarasa in his sideboard? That was his main deck. He sided it out. He sided it yeah. out. And I don't know how I feel about that. You know, I feel like that life gain is can be very important. Um, I think the life gain is less important when you have all those copies of Moments Peace and Weather the Storm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I understand, uh, you're not facing down land destruction. You're not facing down a ton of removal spells. Um, does he run? No, he doesn't run, uh, Forbidden Alchemy, which is kind of that really neat card that goes with right. Pulse Morasa to turn it into like six mana, draw two cards, gain six life. Right. That's a card, right? Yeah. Uh, um, I mean, obviously, you could do that with compulsive research. You could do it with all kinds of other things. So there's all kinds of ways that you can still do it. And but, if you if it came down to it, you can even uh, put a card back into Michael's hand. Oh, I've done that. Yourself. Yeah. I, I, so you, I've done that with Pulse. Yeah, I've, I've absolutely done that as well. So that way you gain yourself six life and you hold on in there. So it looks like we've got the game set up here. And we're just re refixing up these sideboards again super fast. I, I still think that if you're Michael, you don't want those lethal sabotages. Oh, full not agree. I, I think Elephant Guide is just a better card. Heck, I think Hidden Spider is a better card. Yeah, with Moldrifter and whatnot. I mean, I don't think it's going to do a lot, but I think it's going to do enough. Um, it's better than really what turned out to be two mana, destroy one artifact. Absolutely. At sorcery speed. Not even a shatter. Not even natural state. But 
you know, that all that being said, I'm not counting Michael out. And, you know, I hate to say a lot depends on the opening hand, but a lot right. depends on the opening hand. Uh, what's really interesting here is uh, Brian took out the Ulamox Crusher and is taking out an Astrolabe. So those gleeful sabotages look even worse. Yeah, for sure. No, nope, no, nope, that's absolutely. Oh, it's right back, back in. in. Okay. I, uh, coming counter spell makes sense. So let's see if Brian DeMars is going to be our next quarter finalist, or if it's going to be Michael Bunda. Semi finalist. Semi finalist. Did I not say semi finalist? <laughs> he said quarter finalist. <laughs> let's, so let's for those of you who don't know, I work at a college, and it's New Student Orientation Week. I have pulled like five 16 hour days in a row. <laughs> so I'm a little out of it. Looks like we screwed, messed things up a little bit. Um, the wrong person conceded. So we're gonna have to do this one more time uh, because Michael should be on the play. Sorry about the delay folks. So looks like we're getting close. Um, yeah. So it, what needs to happen here is, I believe, Michael. So I think it's Michael that needs to actually be the one that scoops since uh, he's the one that lost this last one. Yeah. We'll get this sorted out. Don't worry too much, folks. So what, if you're Michael, what are you looking for in your opening hand? I mean, besides just all your pump spells. A creature? Hmm. I mean, I. you really want to win by turn four, right? Yeah, absolutely. You want to be as fast as you can. You want to get all your creatures. You, ideally, you want to see Nettle Sentinel into... Burning tree, burning tree, burning tree. Why and, not all four? Oh, no. Kendra, why, are, why aren't you being greedy enough? Just, oh you know... I'm being a want, realist, okay? Yeah, I mean, I, I think you want Forest, Nettle Sentinel, Quirion Ranger, four copies of Burning Tree Emissary. Oh, 100%. Like, I think that... Actually, no, you don't even want Nettle Sentinel, then. You want um, Quirion Ranger, Forest, four copies of Burning Tree Emissary, and Wild Mongrel. That that's that's what you want, or River Boa. I think River Boa is the one I would want more there. Yeah, I mean, you know what? I, I, if Michael gets that, but I again, I think that the Tron deck is so well set up to fight this that I I think, um, yeah, for sure. I I think that it's going to be really tough for Michael here, but. Again, it's not impossible. We saw we saw him win game one. Um, and, you know, we're, we're still experiencing a little bit of technical difficulty. Sorry about that. Um, but we finally got to see the Tron deck. You know, this is actually the first time we're seeing kind of the, the Tron deck that is at least of the stripe of the most popular Tron deck in Popper these days. You know, Brian Koval played the Skyfisher Tron deck, which isn't as popular, but has put up some finishes. You played uh, Teamer Tron over the top, yeah. kind of, just play big, dumb creatures and win the game that way. It didn't really pan out for me. <laughs> it, it did not, but what we're seeing here is kind of the the... When people who play a ton of popper think of Tron, this is what they're thinking of. It's absolutely. Value. I was hoping that we would get to see this at least one time. In fact, I almost brought it, but when I saw Brian running the Skyfisher one, that I figured was really close. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think this deck. I don't think this deck would be as much of as as an issue if it wasn't as popular as it was. I mean, I think that getting locked out by Ghostly Flicker, Mnemonic Wall, Dorona, Dinrovahara is cool once in a while. Right. But when you run into that deck three or four times in a league or 
three or four times in a challenge, it, it gets old fast. And I'm not one to say that fun should be an arbitrary. I think fun is a terrible measure for health of a deck or its place in a metagame. Right. But I do think that you don't want one of your most popular decks to be one that kind of takes away the ability of other people to play magic. I think right. that it, it's kind of like the idea of, I mean, I, on one hand, though, we have in modern, we've had, you know, uh, lantern control, which basically became a uh, work control or like war prison. Mm-hmm. Prison decks always have kind of existed in magic. And, uh, but, you know, just as well, you're right. Fun is, you know, even though it's an iffy kind of measure, ultimately, it's still a factor that is uh, taken into account with the health of formats. We see this with, um, like, uh, uh eggs eggs got kicked out of uh modern pretty well uh we saw car clan ironworks combo for similar reasons but there are a lot more reasons to why that got kind of get pushed but out looks so. like we're actually ready so here we go both players have pretty awkward hands uh michael took a mulligan down to six cards and his six looks Awkward, but keepable. I don't yeah. think you want to go to five. No, I would um, definitely keep that. Brian, on the other hand, it, I don't know if he's keeping seven, but he might be. Um, his seven actually doesn't look that bad. Uh, yeah. He's able to get a turn. F- oh, but he's going to he's going to six, and his six looks like you have to keep it. Um, and yeah, it has sure. has two out of three pieces of Tron has a Stonehorn Dignitary, um, has a redraw with the Prophetic Prism, but we're about to get down to what could be the last game of the night. Uh, we have Michael leading on Skargan Pitskulk, and let's see what's off the top for Brian. Brian draws Mnemonic Wall, so he's yeah. very close to having the combo assemble, leads with Urza's Tower. We do um, have a Savage Swipe, though, so if... Uh... Michael managed to find uh, what, he, what he needs. We could see some uh, damage coming through. Yeah, I, I think there's some merit to just putting the Hunger of the Howlpack token up, uh, counter on immediately. And there it is. Right there. Ephemerate. Um, that's pretty big game. But I think if you are... Well, I was going to say, if you're Michael, you just snap off this Gleeful right now. Mm-hmm. But, oh, Ranker. Okay. Things are getting interesting because um, he's snapping it off. He's snapping it off. I, I think snapping that's off that gleeful sabotage. Let's go. So Michael is applying pressure, but he's not doing it in the chunk stomp he's used to. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, Brian is still several turns away from establishing any kind of lock. Um, but yeah, he needs to get a blue mana here. And that's kind of, he's priced into it. Yeah. So he can't really do anything else this turn. Um, This is going to give Michael a window to do something. I think Michael's ideal draw here is uh, Nest Invader. Yes. Nest Invader is big game. Um, No, but it's a land. Oh. Oh, no. Need some kind of gas here, unfortunately, but I Savage Swipe isn't as good anymore because that Pitskulk doesn't have, excuse me, doesn't have two power. Yeah. So he's going to be able to take out that Dignitary, which is pretty important. It's very important, actually. Um, but that he can't fight a mole drifter. And I wonder if, yep, Brian's going for the value play of evoke mole drifter ephemerate draw four cards. This is kind of showcasing the power of ephemerate. Um, you know, I wrote an article that went live on uh, Channel Fireball yesterday about what the landscape of the metagame looks like. And really, right Mm -hmm. now, two of the top three macro archetypes are ephemerate lists. Um, Charles Jenkins, who's been on this broadcast before, uh, has talked about how Ephemerate's kind of this really big problem card. And there's Weather the Storm, too. It, yeah. 
Brian just drew everything. Yeah. Next turn, he's going to be able Tron's to. Tron's there too. Yeah, he's he has Tron. Um, so what it comes down to is Michael has this turn. He needs to draw vines of vastwood and double vines of vastwood. I, I think that's all he can hope to draw. Yeah. Otherwise, he's locked out of ever taking a meaningful game action again. Mm-hmm. No. No. It doesn't no. Work that way. No. Oh, Michael. Not like this. I mean, I, like I, I don't think it would have mattered. Um, I don't think so either. Uh, yes, uh, I, I've seen people do that with Savage Stripes so often, too. Haunt? Uh, I mean, to be fair, <laughs> I'd rather punt in this situation. I'm, I'm sure Michael's going to go back and, oh, what a punt. And then he's going to realize, oh, it didn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> because really, um, next turn, um, Brian is going to have access to nine mana. He can cast Mnemonic Wall, get back Ephemerate. No, he can't. Did he do that on purpose? He stranded the Ephemerate. Which doesn't oh. matter because I didn't even think of that, but he stranded the Ephemerate, which isn't going to matter. Yeah. Because Brian just drew another Ephemerate. So. Oh, wow. I didn't see that. So what we might even just see, though, is we might actually just see Stonehorn. And then what uh, can ha- what Brian can do is then just go see Flicker uh, at end step and then get play Mnemonic Wall to get back go see Flicker. No, what Brian can do is, and I hope I wonder if he sees this, is at the end of turn, Ghostly Flicker, uh, Stonehorn, and yeah, I see what he's saying. Ephemerate, then untap, get blank mm-hmm. like another attack phase. Play yeah, Brian, wall. I feel like Brian's just got this locked up. This oh no, the, the game is over. Um, it's really a matter of, because once the lock is assembled of ephemerate and mnemonic wall, there's nothing that, uh, there's no game action that Michael can take. And I think Michael didn't even have Viridian Longbow in his sideboard, so. Right. So once we, I think once Brian. Once we see the lock. Yeah, once, once we see all the pieces, I think Michael will probably just recognize, see the writing on the wall and scoop it on up. Oh, he didn't, he didn't, uh, he flickered the Tron piece, which yeah. is fine. I mean, at the, this point. The end result is still going to be the same. I mean, I think once this mnemonic wall comes down, that's it. That's kind of it. Yeah, game's just kind of over. Come on, I'm just, I'm grinning. Just, just do it. And do we see the concession here? It's the shadow pause. I see a m- mouse move into the, the cursor right. moving. No, he's. It looks like Michael's trying to. Oh no! No, there's the good games. There's the good games. So congratulations to Brian Demars on being our second semifinalist. So yeah, so it's going to be Brian. So we're this ends our stream for this week, everybody. But next week we're going to have uh, Brian Demars versus Chris Van Meter to start us out, and then the winner of that goes on and faces Adam Yurchek for the finals. But well, I'm, I'm excited. So Brian and Chris are going to be playing best two out of three matches again next week, and they're going to be able to bring different decks. Um, that being said, Brian, uh, he's 4-0 with Stompy. So if he doesn't bring Stompy, I, I don't know what's going to happen. Chris, on the other hand, you know, Brian got here by going 1-2 with Mono Black and then kind of sweeping sweeping with Stompy. Chris yeah. went 2-1-2-1 two, one, two, one with Burn and Elves and then brought Burn again, brought Mono Black Control, won his matches. Um, so... Brian, both these players have really wide ranges. Um, Chris plays more meta decks. Right. Well, Brian tends to play variants of meta decks. You know, he played Stornhorn Tron today, Flickertron. 
but he put his own twist on it. He right. plays we saw that a little bit with Stompy. I, I saw a lot more like Stompy cards for like, especially like the sideboard. A lot yeah. of like his sideboard choices were a little um, off color. And then uh, they were all green. Well, you you know what I mean. <laughs> um, and even for mono black, like if I recall correctly, his mono black deck like was cutting like some sacred, ca- uh, you know, killing some sacred cows. There, you had like a Phyrexian Rager was no longer in yeah. the deck, and I was like, that's really interesting. So we could definitely see like anything kind of come out of uh, Brian's angle here. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Um, Adam, on the other hand, is a player who's kind of always kind of gravitating towards what he considers to be the best deck. Right. Um, he played the Astro Jeskai in the first round, of, and what did he play the second time around? He played the Encore combo. He now, Encore I combo. actually had his little, you know, blurb, why I chose this deck kind of thing. So <laughs> what he did is he uh, basically said he actually just wanted to do something that was a little more, uh, like, off-kilter, like, off you know, a little weirder new air you know something that he could at least win like one match with and hope to do you know a little more beyond that and he chose encore combo and boy how did it put in some work for him yeah well you know I, i'm interested to see what Adam brings next week you know i've seen him play a lot of like demir control i've seen yeah. him play a lot of demir delver which is in a deck right now but you know what we're about we're only a week away and here's the thing the format could be completely different next week because there's a ban and restricted list update on Monday. Right. Um, we don't, I, 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 we, I don't know. Uh, I have already expressed my thoughts on this. I'm not sure we're going to see any bannings. I don't there's think there's definitely will. a case for it, but it all comes down to wizard's choices. What do you, what do you think on this, Alex? So in my article, I wrote that I don't think anything's going to be banned. I think that if there, there are a few cards you can look at, I think Astrolabe's kind of that, target i think it does a lot of weird things to the format because it kind of lets blue decks specifically uh not care about mana cost uh not necessarily in amount but in style so it can play red it can play blue it play, can play green if it wants to it can play black it can play whatever because it just sees a ton of cards All right um, at the same point that card is still relatively new it's not even three months old in the format yet um, the next most offensive cards to me are kind of like the Tron package because um, it's not that they break the mana system as much as what it does with all that mana. If the decks were just like the Tron Arc deck or Teamer Tron, but it's the fact that they can turn this mana into a prison lock really right. quickly. Um, I, I think that's problematic. At the same point, it's the third most popular archetype not even really the second behind like burning tree emissary aggressive decks so i don't think there's really a case to ban anything i know some people have said oh let's target ephemerate it's not a fun card or it kind of creates these loops i've seen some people talk about whether the storm right um it's kind of this thing that is kind of another nail in the coffin for aggressive strategies um you know i would strategies that are actually kind of thriving right now as well yeah, so I, I don't think anything's going to happen. If any of these things happen, would it surprise me? No. Um, but I don't think right. anything's going to change. And, and that's basically where I stand, too. If something does probably go, I would not be so, uh, upset to see it leave. You know, if Astrolabe left, would I be sad? Mm, not really. I think it's a cool card, but I think it also causes a lot of problems by having perfect fixing. Ephemerate creates loops. Uh, we already had issues with Ghostly Flicker as being a strong potential ban contender. And what we ended up getting was now we have it at one mana. It's just a little slower, but that's fine. A lot of times you just want to do it once per turn. Would I be sad to see that go? Not quite. Um, and same with Weather the Storm. I like Weather the Storm. Helps my elf match up uh, against Burn a little bit sure. more. But... Um, but it, you're right. It does still cause some problems for aggro matchups. So it's definitely, there's a case for pretty much all of these. So, but I also think we're still kind of, it, still a little too early out for Modern Horizons. I don't think this is anywhere close to like what we're seeing with Hogak in Modern right now. No. Um, so, well, I mean, no. But um, I, I, I think we're close. I, I want to congratulate our uh, semifinalists again, Chris Van Meter. And let, let's really talk about Brian for a second, who, Went one two, 
in Barcelona. Yeah. And has rattled off five straight wins. Fantastic. Like, he's crushing he, it. He he's really crushing it. He loves Popper. Um, he's really showing it off right now. And I'm really excited to see him next week. Right. So, so, so actually, next week, and, and in fact, actually, it was uh kind of funny when I was talking to him uh when he was gearing her up for the Mythic Championship. He actually said he was a little more excited to play the league than he was the actual Mythic Championship. He's done plenty, you know, plenty yeah. of Mythic Championships in, or Pro Tours or whatever you want to call them now in his time. But this is something new, something really cool that he gets to show off this format that he absolutely loves. Yeah, so, so we'll have a chance to do this next week for the finals. I'm excited. I know you're I excited. Um, once again, thank you to Cool Stuff Inc. for sponsoring this. Thank you again to Wizards of the Coast for helping to sponsor this event as well. If you go to coolstuffinc.com and use the code PPL5, you'll get 5% off your order. Um, but I think we are just done. Yeah, that's uh, about it. I'm Alex Holman. That's I'm Kendra Smith, Smith, the Maverick Girl. I can't point in the right direction. I'm terrible <laughs> at this. And uh, we'll see you next week. Have a good night, everyone. And good luck to all the people playing in the Popper Championship in Vegas and the Popper MCQ this weekend on Magic Online. I will be playing in the MCQ myself this weekend, and I will be doing some coverage, writing some articles on it. You know, we'll see what happens, but I'm excited. I cannot wait. I'm so hyped. It's all on Magic Online. Obviously, you know, Magic Online, Wizards of the Coast, they're a big sponsor here. They're definitely putting a lot more time, a lot more effort into uh, pushing Popper. And it sounds like this will not be the last no. Popper MCQ. They're starting it. They're testing the waters. And I cannot wait. Have a good one, everybody.